The website I would recommend for everyone who takes the IB is one that goes by one of three names, so either IB Documents, IB Repository or IB Resources. And this is really helpful because it's got uh, links for all of the different subjects that you can take in the IB and then within those links it's got all of the past papers from literally the 1990s and then the mark schemes to go along with those. So you know you can do practice papers in your own time, you can check the mark scheme uh, to see what the IB is looking for, um, you can check chapters that you need to revise a bit more. This is an excellent resource, especially if you've kind of run out of the past papers that your school may or may not have given you. Reddit is your friend in this case, that's where I find most of those links. So you can see I'm trying all of the different names, IB resources, IB repository, IB documents, uh, eventually you'll find it. But this would be a really good site to check out if you're an IB student. I personally use this site more during study leave in the run up to my own exams, um, but I mean you can use it you know, if you're coming up to uh, your first year marks or your second year marks and you can print them off or you can keep them online. A site that I used a lot to revise for biology was one called BioNinja that was recommended to me by my biology teacher. And what's really nice is they've got all of their content separated into both standard level and higher level material and then on the side here they've got these nice digestible chunks under core content. I also really liked uh, the syllabus statements that they embed within their pages so you can check what you have and haven't revised and what you're going over. They've also got this really nice uh, feature at the side called extra content uh, which is really good to look at if you're wanting to read around your subject or if you're looking inspiration for your personal statement when it comes to applying to university or for looking for inspiration for your coursework called internal assessments in the IB where you need to uh, um, do a written assignment on a question or a topic of your choice. BioNinja has also these really awesome summary PDFs which are good as a visual aid for revision and also to help you if you haven't really had time to make any notes. For chemistry, a site that was actually recommended to me by my chemistry teacher was this YouTube channel of Richard Thornley's and he's got these really, really helpful playlists at the bottom where he's organised the content on his channel into the different chapters uh, for the IB and then also separated those into the higher and um, the standard and higher level content. Most of his videos are pretty short, uh, some are a bit longer, but he's also got this good feature where he uh, gets you to pause the video and do practice questions to revise the material that you're learning. And his videos are also quite funny, which is always a bonus. Chem Guide. This can actually be used by both A-level and um, sixth form students. I really liked it because it's very clearly explained and it's also very good if you're looking for reaction mechanisms within chemistry or how different chemicals react under specific reaction conditions. You can just see the menu here. Um, and what I also quite liked about this site is that they've got a feature where they tell you the key points and vocabulary that you need to take away from the site. Um, so you're really honing down on what you need to know. Because they're tailored to, you know, just generally college level um, chemistry, they've also got a little bit of extra information. So maybe browsing that site um, for inspiration for personal statements or IAs would also be a good idea. Um, another site that wasn't recommended to me by a teacher but one that I saw come up quite a lot and that I often found quite helpful was one called Chemistry Libra. So I wouldn't necessarily go into the site to search what I was looking for but if I typed something into Google and I saw this site come up I'd often click on it. So that was just a site that I found quite helpful. Um, and then in terms of IAs and coursework again, my teacher actually recommended me to look through the Royal Society of Chemistry site. I mean, I actually found the experiment that I used for my chemistry IA on this site, and they're suitable for a school laboratory. So that's a good site to look at when it comes around to IA season at your school.
For my foreign language, I did high level German, German B. The translating a site that I used online a lot was this one called Word Reference. You can use that for any language, like from French to Spanish, from German to English, whatever you want. One that I know a lot of people use specifically for German, I don't know if you can use it for other languages, was this one called Leo. Um, and that, I mean, teachers use that as well, so that's also a very good site if you're looking for some online translators that aren't Google Translate. For English, a uh, site, so I did standard level English literature and translation, so I don't know if these sites would also help for people who are doing perhaps um, uh, uh, literature and performance or high level English, but I actually found Spark Notes really helpful because they have these whole guides on the piece of literature that you're studying. So for example for Hamlet they had this whole guide with uh, with themes, with the characters, with the plot summaries, which was really useful for perhaps alternative interpretations to the ones that you'd explored with your teacher during class time. Then sometimes, because Sparknotes doesn't have guides on everything that you might have studied, I found Schmoop very helpful, and that was also, uh, Schmoop was, I would say, better than Sparknotes in terms of finding quotes, so I always found quotes really difficult to find when I was just flicking through this massive piece of literature, so Schmoop had a really good collection organised by character or theme that you were looking for. In terms of the unseen paper for English, a site that I found very useful is this Wix site, so I just typed in Wix site IB English into Google and it came up. And what's really good is, I mean, it's it's got content for both standard and high level students and then if you click on paper one in the menu bar, it comes up uh, with these uh, little downloads for um, example responses to papers and the mark that they got, which is quite nice to read and see you know, what, what you should be aiming for and also what you shouldn't be aiming for. They also have these extracts that you can download, and I would usually just cover up their own analysis, read through the extract and try and analyse it myself, and then see what their interpretation was and how I could um, uh, get those points as well. Uh, so that was how I practiced for the unseen paper rather than just, just doing practice papers over and over again. And for maths, how I revised was really just doing lots and lots of practice questions. Um, the textbook was really useful because it had answers in the back, but those answers weren't always correct and they also didn't show the working for the longer and more complicated questions you might have to do. Um, there was this online site uh, that you could get that was linked to the textbook, which was like um, IB, Standard Level Maths, Oxford Work Solutions, and where the textbook might have an incorrect answer, this site almost, well, I never saw it having an incorrect answer, so that was really good, and I'm sure there's a corresponding high-level resource as well. For economics, I must admit, I didn't use too many online resources, I focused on my class notes and textbook. But when I did go online, I often used this site called IB Economist, and they're pretty good. They've got uh, some things you do need to pay a subscription for, but lots of the things that they have freely available include uh, notes like the ones that I've got up on the screen, um, and they also have some recommendations on how to approach your internal assessment, your coursework, and then also um, the different papers uh, that you'll be doing for IB Economics.